Okay, so now we're going to talk about how you can extend Copilot for Microsoft 365. And I'm joined by Abram Jackson, who's on the platform team. Welcome, Abram. Thank you. It's great to be here. So today what I want to do is actually go through kind of the basics of how Copilot for Microsoft 365 works. Then we're going to show how you can extend it. Then we're going to show what happens once you've extended it with the different user experiences. We're going to do all demos, if that's OK with everyone. So first, to start out, how does Copilot for Microsoft 365 work? Well, it comprises large language models, also the Microsoft Graph, which includes the ability to reach data. This, for example, in Microsoft 365, places like SharePoint, OneDrive, email, calendar, Teams, all of these things to be able to basically ground your prompts and use the internet and then present that information back to you in your app. So it's a lot more sophisticated than just a kind of generative chat AI window inside of your Office apps. It's using all this information to give you very tailored responses. Now the news this week is actually that you can build your own co-pilot. So for HR, finance, and then plug them into your own data sources. And basically you can have that tailored experiences with your data, your own co-pilot, and all your actions built in. And so when you think about the different other connector types beyond building your own co-pilot, we have the ability first to do what's called a plug-in. Now the plug-in is not only a read action, but you can actually write to the external data source with a plug-in. Then you have another option that we've had for a long time now, which is basically a graph connector. Now the graph connector, think about the Microsoft graph, it's usually indexing all of the Microsoft 365 content, but you can expand that out to third-party sources. And your custom co-pilots, as we showed before, where you can basically focus those in on various uh, specific resources, like a specific SharePoint document library or site, and also give instructions to the custom co-pilot, then distribute it out to your users. So because we've got a lot of different uh, people watching that are developers in the audience right now, what I'd love to do, Abram, is actually go through how you'd build them, and then we can actually show what they look like running. Absolutely. So let's start in Copilot Studio. And I'm here at Copilot for Microsoft 365, and I'm going to create a new Copilot by clicking on this button. Now I can have a conversation to create it, but I'm going to go over here to skip and configure it. So I'm going to give it a name okay. so that the users can refer to it. And I'm going to take from my clipboard history a description and instructions. Now these instructions are very important because they tell the co-pilot how it's going to operate and what it's going to be able to do. Now I'm only using 600 characters or so, but I can actually get very detailed with 8,000 characters. Right. And so this is going to focus it on my work. Now I can also give it the starter prompts. This is yep. going to help users understand how they can use this co-pilot. Now those are optional, so right for now I'm going to skip ahead and click on create. And that's it. That's creating the co-pilot. So that's building kind of this full, full page experience like we saw in the graphic earlier. But also there are other things that you can do to extend co-pilot. So what, what else can we do? So let's take a look at co-pilot for Microsoft 365. You see that I already have several actions defined and added. But let's take a look at what it takes to add a new action. So I'm going to click on Add Action. And this is going to add it into co-pilot for Microsoft 365. I have several options. I can make a connector. I can make a conversation. I can make another prompt to a language model. And okay. I can use a Power Automate flow. For now, I'm going to click on conversation and show you what that looks like. So I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it support KB docs improvement. Okay. I'm, I'll use the default solution. And that uses, the, it creates a schema for me. And now I've created the plugin, and I'm ready to edit it from here. OK, so now you've created kind of a specialized co-pilot with a full page. You've also created a plugin. Why don't we show how you would do this if you're using something like Visual Studio Code? Because I think a lot of people are writing code to build their extensions. So why don't we show that experience? So let's take a look at what this looks like in Visual Studio Code. When we're making a plugin, we have these three JSON files. We have the Swagger, which we'll look at first. This is the open API spec definition of our functions. Okay. So you can see the different APIs here along with what they return. The support plugin gives information to the language model about how to use those APIs. Mm -hmm. So you can see that I have the functions defined and I've described them. And here we see the pointer back to the Swagger file that we were just looking at. Third, we have the Teams app manifest. Okay. So this is describing the application to the user in the store. So it needs a name, it needs my name, it's going to have a description, and it's going to point to those other files that we were just looking at. Right, so this is where you do all the different metadata, the branding, those types of things in this file. So we also had the full page copilot experience that we saw in the low code. 
through Copilot Studio. How would we do that here in ProCode? So let's move over to that next JSON file, the content copilot.json. You can okay. see the similar kinds of properties here, right? So we still need to give the copilot a name. Here it is support content author. We have an ID, we have a description, and once again we have the instructions to inform the copilot about how it will work. Okay. Next, we ha are connecting to our, AD our Azure DevOps wiki. We're connecting to that plugin file that we were just looking at, mm -hmm. and we have the conversation starters. And that's all that it takes to define a copilot here. So not too bad, even building it through code directly. So now that we've got the two different copilots built, we've got some plugins built, why don't we show what this looks like? But you know, to get everybody kind of grounded on the, no pun intended with grounded, on the copilot experience, why don't we show what it looks like before you add the extensions to it, just to see what you can do normally with graph grounding, for example. So Copilot for Microsoft 365 can access my email and chats and files. So let me type in here, find all the emails I sent today and group them by topic. Okay. This is going to search my emails and it's going to use natural, it's going to use language processing to group them into the different customer service emails that I've been sending today. This is the default experience of working with my email. And this is really important because it's actually going out, it's retrieving additional information, in this case in email, and presenting that to you. So it's more sophisticated than just text generation with a simple prompt. But we can add external information through a connected service to it. So why don't we show what it looks like then if we add a connector to extend the graph to let this then be able to get to that information, retrieve information for us? Absolutely. So first, let me start a new conversation. And I'm going to type something similar of summarizing my emails, but let me also ask Copilots to find a support wiki article that is most related to each one of these topics. Mm -hmm. I'm going to type this in. It's still going to search through my email and give similar information, but you see that it is also now referencing my Azure DevOps. And I can see that in the citations. I can hover over them and I can click on and look at these articles that it is bringing in. Right, just to reiterate, again, these are things outside of Microsoft 365. I've expanded the index effectively for the Microsoft Graph to this external wiki, and now it's able to parse that information and retrieve stuff for context here as well. Now, we also talked about plugins where we can read and write things back. So why don't we show what a plugin looks like? Yeah, so let's go back to that session we were looking at earlier. And now I want to uh, type in, create a doc improvement task to improve that KB article based on the related emails that I've sent. Mm -hmm. So now Copilot is going to look through this conversation history, see what that, see what that KB article was, find the plugin, and call, be ready to call the plugin with this new content to create this task. Now it's going to ask me for confirmation so I can review this and change it, but let me type yes, and we'll see that Copilot goes ahead and it updates that external database. Very cool, so now we've shown kind of how this works inside of the context. In this case, we're using like Teams or you could use copilot.microsoft.com, but why don't we show what it looks like in that full page copilot that we built earlier with your own branding and kind of focused in on your topic? Yeah, so let's look at the support content author that we just created. So this is the copilot that I just created in Copilot Studio. Okay. You see here those conversation starters that I showed you earlier to help the user understand what kinds of things they can be doing with this copilot. Now let me ask it to update the wiki article about remote help to include that the user has logged in. And it's going to use its instructions and its tone, of course, all along with my branding, and it's going to generate this text. It's also going to use the plugin that's included in this copilot. I'm going to confirm, and co it goes ahead and it makes that update to that knowledge base. Awesome stuff. So this is kind of the, the branded co-pilot experience for your specific task or role. Now though, there are ways I think to actually use them inside of copilot.microsoft.com or Teams. Why don't you show us that experience? Yeah, so let's look at uh, the session that I had with Copilot that was analyzing my email. So first I'm going to type at, and I'm going to select that copilot that I was just using, the support content writer. Okay. And I'm going to ask it to update the wiki article like we just did. Now I'm going to mention a second copilot, the support report writer. And this is going to use its custom instructions and the content from this conversation so far, mm -hmm. and it is going to generate a report for me that's correctly formatted, that includes the email summary from Copilot, it includes the KB update that we made with the other custom Copilot, and what we're doing here. 
now I'm ready to copy this and send it to my boss. Awesome stuff. So we've just shown even how you can build multiple copilots that can reference each other in the context of chat. So now you've seen all the copilot extents and options. Check out dev.microsoft.com slash copilot for more, and we'll see you soon.